welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. For the Premier League fans, it's only two games into the season, so no need to overreact, but we did get a glimpse of what to expect. Two games, two losses, and these are some of the reasons they've been so bad. United lost 2-1 to Brighton, and you might be tempted to think it was a close game, but it wasn't. Not even close. They might as well have lost 4-0. This is called foreshadowing. First, I'll give credit where it's due. Graham Porter, despite losing two of his best players in Bisuma and Kukurea, came up with a game plan that was executed to perfection. I mean, Danny Welbeck looked like prime Didier Drogba at times. A statistic that I liked was that Brighton did not lose a game at all when scoring first last season. Brighton knew exactly what to do with or without the ball and United on the other hand looked like a team improvising every minute and it showed. No cohesion in midfield and as soon as Fernandes missed that early chance in the beginning, United fans had this sinking feeling things could get worse. Shocking, dreadful, no quality. United lost 4-0 a week later to Brentford and De Gea's mistake to open the scoring for Brentford was simply inexcusable. His pass to Eriksen under pressure was terrible and then just a lack of organization defensively made them concede two more goals that virtually ended the game in the first half. Tactically again, brilliant from Brentford, but from a United perspective, the confidence is just shattered and teams know it. They've now lost seven away games in a row going back to last season. I won't bother talking about Maguire, Aaron Wan, Bissaka and Rashford. Enough has been said about them but as a football fan, Jadon Sancho man. Not acceptable, not good enough for Man United. United play Liverpool next and despite Liverpool drawing their first two games, they are relishing the chance to get back on track by destroying their rivals United. Arsenal have been impressive, no lie. Their attack has been fluid and lethal. If I was an Arsenal fan, I would be optimistic for now. Arteta's tactics aren't just getting the best out of new signing Jesus, but they've been solid in defense. Saliba looks like a legit centre-back, but just like Chelsea, which version of Arsenal will we get as the season wears on? Saka is a phenomenal footballer who just needs to add more goals to his game. Chelsea are the most consistently inconsistent top team in the league. A narrow win versus Everton was good, but a draw against Tottenham felt like a loss, considering how dominant they were. You can make valid arguments about whether Tottenham's goals should have stood, but I think it takes away from the fact that when Chelsea dominate games, they just lack a killer instinct. Havertz missed a good chance and Jorginho became too clever for his own good, and his mistake led to the first goal. Unfortunately for Chelsea fans, that's their frustration with Jorginho. He's dominant at his best but takes unnecessary risks at the worst possible time that cost them wins. If I was a fan of Liverpool, I would hope that Darwin Nunes calms down. There's no question he has a lot of fight and determination in him, but his red card on his first Premier League start at Anfield proved that he's at best a raw talent that must be nurtured rather than thrown to the wolves. There are memes about his poor first touch and poor decision making, but despite his critics, he has scored three important goals for Liverpool so far, which means he's getting in the right positions. However, Liverpool looked a lot better without him on the field and after Sadio Mane's departure to Bayern, Liverpool must fill that attacking vacuum fast. Barca drew nil-nil to Rayo Vallecano and if I was a Barca fan, I would have expected a lot more from new signing Rafinha and Dembele who did not impress at all. I have no doubt Lewandowski will score goals, but maybe, just maybe, Barca were too quick to sideline Depay, Aubameyang and Ferran Torres. It helps that they have squad depth, but with Barcelona getting money from the imaginary money tree, time will tell if their financial gamble will pay off.
And finally, congratulations to Bayern Munich and PSG for winning their respective leagues after two games. I look forward to watching their Champions League games and not their league games. Sarcasm? You think? In Serie A, it will be a battle between Juventus, Inter, Milan, Napoli and Roma. Uh, Roma, who I feel Mourinho is building a squad capable of challenging for the title. All teams won their first games of the season, so it should be interesting moving forward.